go. If we start Get the next done. one late, we start the next one late. Though. Well, who is it? Do they really need all that time? Con <laughs> Conservation Commission. Oh, yeah, fine. Conservation. I don't want to be on that. Today. <laughs> That's not me. All right, so we'll get started. So um, right. sent out the updated doc as best I could to uh, from what we had talked about. Uh, there's a few spots with my question marks that wasn't sure exactly what we wanted to do there. But uh, so let's uh, let's just quickly go through. Um, I can think, I, yeah, go ahead. Can Mark. I say that I spoke with um, I sp spoke in length with Michael. Barrett from Durham. He's the, I don't know if he's the planning, I think he's you okay. in Durham. Um, and I, he was very, very helpful. And he was actually, um, his name was given to me by Andrew Cushing at uh, New Hampshire Preservation Alliance right. as someone who has dealt with um, historic district for a long time. I don't know that, it, I don't believe it was just for Durham. He's done okay. it yep. other places. And so, um, there were a couple things he asked if he could see it, and there were a couple things he had questions on. There were a couple things that he had um, options for language-wise that we okay. had talked about. Um, so, and then there were just a few things that I, he and I saw as well. So under Historic District Commission on the first page, A, number one, instead of members of the Historic District Commission, change it to commission shall be appointed. I don't know if that's really worth a change, but it was um, something just in language, and then as well, two, all the way down at the end, um, it's not the, doesn't seem to be the purpose of the commission, it's the purpose of the district in that sentence. So again, language more, and I don't know if that's worth a, all right, a change. So, so you, you lost me. I'm sorry. That's all right. Historic what was District the first? Commission A number one, it's, it reads, members of the Historic District Commission shall be appointed by the City Council. Yeah. I don't, possibly changing that just to commission, members of the commission, and I don't know if that's worth a change or not, but it was something um, he had suggested and. Okay. We'll let um, me go the way in on that. Yep, okay. and then at the bottom, it'd be nice to know, because when I started reading this, number two, on the very last end of the sentence, it reads, and ability to understand, appreciate, and promote the purpose of the commission. We're not. I don't think it's the purpose of the commission, it's the purpose of the district. Right. So, like the purpose of the, I don't know if it's the purpose of the commission or the purpose of the district itself. Commission are the people, the district is right. the thing. Okay. So, those are two Stuff. quickies. Okay. And then the only th and the things you had were the five the yeah. originals. Okay. So and I I agree with those. Uh, and, you know, I, from the feedback that I got, that everyone was okay yeah. with that. Uh, at the end of number on page two, the end of number six was something that got suggested that we add. Uh, sense. Uh, I had you had some we had just made some changes on number seven, meaning all votes to approve or deny must be. Um, is it, can we say by majority vote instead? Can it just be by majority vote that way? The issue is if you have, if you only have three members. Right. Present. Yep. Which constitutes a quorum. They can take action. And if it's just a majority, then it would be the majority of those present, which means something could pass with two votes. Okay, I see. I think you need to be like, for a zoning board, it's very specific, both in the RSA and our, that, that you have to have at least three votes, even if you only got three members there. Okay. So uh, okay. that was the effort to do that. Okay, was cool. To, if, you, if you only got three or four members, you still got to have three yes or three no. Three yeses or three no's. Okay. All right, okay. Cool. Um, and then number... About Sarah's. Shoot. You have a strikeout in number 12. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to do some of this from memory. Um, Sarah questioned the need of 12, period. Um, 
Oh, all together. Yeah. In terms of, I, I think, I certainly think that if the commission decides that they want to do something like that and can work it out with individual property owners, that the property owners accept that. And I think they could do that without specifically being authorized to do that. I think the 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 I think the point she was trying to make was that there may be a um, that some property owners may take it that they're under an obligation to accept these markers because it's part of the commission's job to do that as opposed to it being voluntary, let's say. Certainly if people want to do that on a voluntary basis, the commission and property owners can do that without any authorization from the city anyway. I mean, we could, we could do that now. Historic com uh, Heritage, Heritage Commission. Commission could go out and do that mm -hmm. now if they wanted to. Um, I don't know. I, is, it's it, is it harder to get money from the city to do it if it's not mentioned in here? That's the only plus that I would see by including it because, I mean, we could add uh, something. Probably, yes. We could <coughs> add something in there about um, with coordination with property owner or something like that. That right. way if the property owner didn't want it, they could say no. But if we leave it in and add that verbiage, then if it's okay. easier for the commission to get money. Yeah. Okay, with yeah. cooperation of property owner. I, I like that. That, mm -hmm. that takes away a little bit of the ambiguity um, uh, but to answer your question but yes it would be harder for them to get money if they don't if it's not part of their specific duties mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they will get a budget but you know using the Heritage Commission as an example or the, or even the zoning board as an example the budget is like a thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. so I mean it's not like you're right. going to be doing a lot of anything, you know, and that would that includes uh, training and conferences and you know whatever else that the board members may feel that they have to do. So, uh, but anyway, okay. So I like that. That's a good idea. And then um, uh, number fourteen is that big question mark of is is one through thirteen enough? <laughs> and maybe we stop there or. So you have to ask powers and duties, right? And powers and duties is number 14, part of the powers and duties. Right. I think that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, and is is 1 through 13 enough? Is that, or do we want to leave it open-ended, so to speak, that they may they may undertake other action that they feel is necessary. That would have been a good question. What is other act? What would ever be? Yeah, other it's like, and I don't know. It's don't like chaining that. yourself to a bulldozer. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> that could be, I mean, deemed any necessary <laughs> action to Same try and again. push <laughs> this. Yeah, I would say delete it. Me too. I vote to delete it. I really don't know which way to go with it. Because I don't know if there's a reason for it. Like, uh, you know, so. Well, I think it's that, like at the end of every job description and, yes, and other assignments is deemed necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what everybody tells you to do. Yeah. yeah. Here's a mop yeah. and a bucket. And smile all the way through. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay. So uh, Sarah was in favor of deleting it. and. Um, we live in a democracy, so majority rules. Okay. So we'll take that out. Okay. Um, under... Designation of historic district, this yeah. next spot, procedures for designation, we're kind of, we're um, doubling up here. It says the HOG district and then HOG exists. So, I mean, HOG district, that's a double up. So yeah. if we just change it to HOD. Or, or, it's D, like a language, or D district. But or, yep. Or L, a, a, choose. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, HOG yeah. is D yeah. district. Okay. Uh, 
other thing I saw on number four in that same section mm -hmm. is development of the town, region, state, or nation. Should we change that to city? Uh, does yes. it matter? Yep, it I does. I don't know if it does. So. City. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do a word search, make sure we don't have any yeah. other towns. Um, under B, delineation of the district on page four, mm -hmm. at the very bottom, this was one that Michael had um, offered and, and put in there, and I, I read it through a few times, and I thought, well, maybe that's what we should do. At the very bottom of B, delineation of district, it reads, uh, da, 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 that are located within the overlay district as de delineated herein at the time that the district is established. So, yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. That yep. I read it like sixty times, and I, it made sense. But then I started questioning: Do we really need it? I yeah, don't know. because that way, um, if we if we ever add to the district, we we could also amend that wording. It, 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 yeah, yeah, I got. I understand what you're saying. And then uh, right there, uh, the fourth, the fourth lot, mm -hmm. it should say map 432, not 433. Brett, pick that up. Nice catch. And oh, while I'm thinking of it, um, well, I looked at this today, and I forget which one now. The the church lot. Whichever one of these, the other threes, it yeah. is. I That's the number three. The third one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, be, by the time we get to, um, hopefully anyway, by the time we get to adopting this, that will be three lots. So we'll have to we'll change have to it. rechange to these pieces. To reflect the three lots that they are creating out of that one. So is, does that affect when we have a public hearing or something on this, no. that can be a change. No, it's later. just they're, they're, uh, they're going to the September 3rd planning board meeting and I mean, it's from a property management standpoint, this is a simple subdivision and so it, it should go through the planning board. I mean, It'll be up to you guys, but I mean, it should go through the planning board in one meeting, so that it'll be, be done. All three of those even subdivided be on this list. It'll just be changing that the notation for what's now number three to be three, three A, three B, C, three C, or however. So all of them will still be within this document. Yeah, it'll yeah. just be different passes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They'll have, they'll get their own unique number. Usually, it's uh, well. Sometimes they just do, uh, you know, lot 1.1, one, 1.2, one, one, one 1.3, but sometimes they do lot 1, 2, 3, 4. It depends on what's available on the maps, so I, I mean, there's no consistency. But So anyway, I just wanted to mention that, that yep. by the time we get around to adopting anything, there'll be two more lots actually in the list. Okay. I do have a handful of things under purview of the commission. All right. Sorry. That's okay. Um, a, activity within the historic, we say historic district overlay district, so some of its language and some of its, so we're doubling up again right there. Is that, you see how that's Sure, really yeah, no, yeah, you're district right. District yes, overlay yes district. we are, yep. Um, approval of the HDC is required for the following. Um, this was a one that Michael had suggested um, for the following activity within the HOD, instead saying, uh, is required for the following activities and structures within the HGOD. Approval is not required for any activity or structure of that part of the activity or structure that is not visible from the road. I think the deal was the whole visible from the road at any time of the year thing so that yeah. he and I talked a lot about whether or not anything happening in the back is really worth, you know, if you're putting up a I don't know, a, a new light structure and it's in the back of the building and we're really kind of concentrating on the facade of the building. If it's not going to damage the building or, or it's on the, you know, some big monstrosity on the building, it's in the back and it's not, 
He's not trying to visible. not visible to. Doesn't have line of, line of sight from the road. Line of sight from the road type of thing. Visible. He That's spoke a, a lot about, you know, you take a lot off the table and a lot off of people's um, concerns. If you're, if take the church, for example, if you're putting up a new light so that people can park in the parking lot, if it's not hanging on the building and it's not, you know, distressing the building in some point and it's not really seen from the road, then would you really have to have the historic district look at it? That's a good point because, you know, there, there's so, certainly economical opportunities there as long as you meet the looming requirement it doesn't go up in the air and all the other things that the right, light needs right. to do. But you could put a newer light fixture and not maybe potentially have to follow the older standards of the light and be not right. non-economical from a perspective of a light bulb and things like that. I think that's a good idea, really. Okay. And I think we had talked about that a little bit. Yeah. I think that was something that David was yeah. kind of into. Yeah. Um, he did offer... Um, so up there it talks about structure and um, in there and it also in the next piece talks about exterior architectural appearance or something of that nature and he sent through a couple definitions for those so that people understand yep. what those are you know yep. so okay and I can, that went through with the copy that I sent you. Yeah, okay, all right, I, I'll take a look at that. did not get through to everybody, right. I apologize. All right. Um, on number three, simpler language. Can we go simpler language to the erection, al erection, alteration, or removal of a wall or fence? Any kind of wall, barrier, or fence. Any kind of, any kind of wall, barrier, or fence. The erection, so it's the... Activity within the district removal of a wall or that is fence. subject to review, erection, or alteration, or removal of a wall or fence. Or you know, or removal or of any kind of wall. I think it was any kind of wall that seemed, I don't know, maybe not. Yep. Any okay. kind I don't of know. Wall. Maybe that was too. Yeah, I don't know what, uh, what else we would have for the area other than a wall. You can take out any fence. kind and just make a removal of wall, barrier, or fence. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and that would be a little more specific. Yeah. All right. Dean, when this, if, if this takes place prior, it, let's say that the subdivision happens and folks are over there trying to, you know, purchase something over yep. there, right? Is this going to be, per, is this going to be part of what they are purchasing? Um, In other words, if, if I had visions of yes. making something over there into something or, else and then I looked at this and I was like, holy crap, I can't do anything I want to do, is that deterring people from doing that? No. Um, well, uh, I shouldn't even ask that. No, 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 no. That's no. Uh, the, um, yes, because. Uh, well, wait a minute. It could. I mean, well, well I mean, you don't want one of the buildings to get knocked down and McDonald's go there. Yeah, no, no, right. no. Right. But are you just asking, like, if I'm asking, let's say that it, it gets subdivided and it goes on the market, because I think that's the theory, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And let's say somebody comes along and goes, I'm going to put a restaurant in there. I'm going to call it yada yada. And I'm going to take that facade off, and I'm going to put big glass windows Oh, yeah, in yeah. No, if that, this that is would in be place you before can't that, that happens, that's not going to happen. That's yeah. true. But what, so is it is it a cat and mouse game, and who gets done yes. first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That, and so that's kind of what already happened. So is there, at some point, when we're still discussing this, the key, that the key, it the overrules key. anything kind yeah, of so like the key, we were the key milestone is the planning board has to post this for a public hearing and once it's posted for the public you hearing, can continue to make changes then but once you post it and the done. planning okay. board has not done that just yet. the same way with the demolition thing but if i'm looking at that property not knowing that i'm going to get strapped with this is that kind of unfortunate or is that part of the deal um I'm sorry. I, I would oh, say at this it's point, disclosure. <laughs> I'm going with I'm that because I know a gentleman no. came to town and bought a bunch of stuff in Lakeport, right, right? Right. And now he's got no park and he's got no water, and I don't know if he knew all that. Probably did, because he got a good number on the property. But still, he's going. He's got some big challenges. Yeah. Ahead no. Of him. Yeah. Uh, well, I think, I think anybody who does their due diligence is going to know they're they're going to be subject to yeah. this. Mm -hmm. I, I just I just hope it doesn't deter people from from actually doing something with those properties because you, you wouldn't want somebody to go, oh, I'm not getting um, involved with that, right? Yeah. Well, I will 
And I'm Although I don't want McDonald's or Burger King in there but either. I, I, <laughs> but that's a good point, just to be sure. And um, the next time that we meet with the diocese, I'll... Uh, mention to them they that, that I'm sure they will, but I'm to they need to disclose to potential buyers that the HOD is a is a is going to be a reality. Uh, off completely the subject is the is do they already have potential buyers? Don't know. Yeah, because I've had just I've had two people contact me and ask me how do they. How would they go about purchasing that property once it's been subdivided? Or could they do that? And I said, well, I think you have to wait until it gets subdivided if, if that passes. Ye, um, or should they just reach out to the, the, diocese? the diocese? Yeah, I mean. Already, so that they, the they, diocese I mean, has I, knowledge I, I that don't, they I, have I, buyers? I don't know the answer yeah. because they haven't, they haven't shown us their cards. But yeah. whether... The person that was originally going to buy it was only buying it for the school building and they would just deal with everything else or whether they were buying it for the totality. I, I don't know. We, we don't know and it's never been said. Um, if under the scenario that the prospective buyer was just interested in the school building, then the fact that it gets subdivided off and they don't have to worry about anything else is probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. Also means it's probably a less of a purchase price because because they have less. That's but true. that also yeah. depends on what they wanted to do with the school. You're, yeah, right. exactly. Because right. they might not be able to do it. Now. Right. It's interesting well, you say that because the Holy Grail had a big bar in the middle of it and downstairs, which I thought was great, but they didn't last. But I mean, yep, I guess yep. you could do that there too because it's inside. But still, there's, yep, yep. there's you know. There's so I, 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 I don't know the answer to that, and um, they certainly can. They certainly can sell it any time they want to um, ha would the purchase and sales be contingent on the approval of the subdivision or you know whatever the like, terminology they want to certainly more opportunity to, use, to do but, something better with yeah. it if it's subdivided I think. but um, it's there's certainly once the planning board uh, posts for a public hearing There's no question that they're they're under. They're, they're under. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So there is a little bit of a urgency. Number four, page five. Ish. Yes. <laughs> so number four in the middle of page five. Um, Kind of along the lines a lot what you were saying about if you if you can't see it from the front, why do we care? If could we modify if the if the installation of pavement is not changing the facade of the building, right? What? So could it be changed to something like the establishment or expansion of any driveway or parking area situated between the front facade of the building and the street? So it states that that would be subject to review. We could do that between the front facade of the building yeah. and the street, and that way that deletes anything that's happening yeah. behind it. Yeah. Okay. So how does that play into, say, that corner lot where that church school building is? They're on two streets. Yeah. Is it just the front facade to the address ah. of no, that building? No, it's two building? fronts. There's, there are two fronts. Yeah, it has to be line of sight from under, there. Under our definition, there's, yeah. there's two fronts. That's why I said line of sight, because that comes... So I, I, I wouldn't put front facade. I would say between the the significant building and the street. Line of because sight. front... Like roadway. Because right. it, it doesn't have a front. It has two sides on that building. Okay. The Veteran Square in that, you know, they're surrounded by streets. Right. So it would be every side. It's true. All right. I got to run all this language through legal anyway at some point in time, and so we'll. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, 
she has something for temperate for signage number okay. six. Okay, and we don't have to put anything in there about in accordance with any necessary driveway permits. No, I think that's in that case it is. Uh, it's assumed. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, we we would we would enforce and let them uh, disagree. I guess. <laughs> Um, number six, we keep going back and forth to s signage, mm -hmm. and the thought was maybe signage except for um, temporary signs, signage serving single-family residences, auxiliary signs, so telling people what what is, is not subject to review right there. So anything other than these things you got to come see us. Otherwise, if it's a temporary sign, a sign placed on the inside of the building, a sandwich board or an other portable sign, otherwise, all of those, you don't need to come see us. But anything other than that, come see us. I had, an, I had a note to move that to elements of design on page 11. No, it's on, it's on page 12. Oh, is it on page 12? Yeah, it says signs proposed, and that's an element of design that gets reviewed for approval. So why don't we just strike that number six out of here. Well, let's see. Well, elements of design is a, is a big one that just, that came back, so. That's on page 11, right? Yeah, around yeah. there. Spill, or spills out to 12. Yeah, so I had forgotten this, and it was one that, <laughs> Michael had brought back and said, where is all your elements of design? So we have one through three on there. There's usually, let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11. There's usually 11 elements of design and uh, it kind of freaked him out that we had cut so much off. And yep. originally when we had done this, we were, we were cutting a lot to not freak people out. Um, and I had had, I had asked Sonia Mashashik from Mashashik Turpin to go through the elements of design to make them more appropriate to Laconia. Mm -hmm. um, Michael suggests that um, these are, I was surprised that it was, it was a majority vote and I was not the majority. Um, I did not want to strike them. Um, they're pretty vital for reviewing the applications. Okay. So are my elements of design or the thing? The on elements the, on of five? design. Yeah, we have three now, right? And then yeah. Dean added one. We had two before. Or s and now originally we had to sign 13. One oh, the originally there was 13? Yeah. Oh, so I don't have any documents that have 13. Yeah, so. no, the very first original that we had um, reviewed and used to um, give the Laconia copy originally had 13 and they included the scale the proportions signs elevation of the floor and floor to floor heights massing roof shape entrance fenestration materials orientation style and details and as i said i had i asked uh, Masha, uh, sonia to go through because they're specific to the area we live in mm -hmm. so durham's was specific to what they had yeah sonia went through and very nicely um, really cut these down and made them appropriate to Laconia. Okay. And actually cut a few things out. Um, but, because she felt we, they, we didn't have that particular thing in this in this city. Right, and the attention to that section is really for new construction that may occur within the district. Yeah, or I, additions. Would, I would think so. Or additions. So can we strike on page five the mention of signage for number six because it's covered in elements of design? Or are you saying because that's more for new? Right. Yeah, but you're saying for additions too. So if I wanted to add a sign, it could be reviewed for the elements of design. Well, I think it's different. The, the elements of design fall under standards for review. So these would list the standards. So for instance, um, elevation, oh, that one's a pain in the butt to read, but roof shape, 
Sonia changed it to the contributing buildings have a variety of roof types based upon the style of the building. So it's this is really for the commission, I see it as really for the commission to have, it's their guidelines on how to, um, so if you were coming in and you said, I want to put a pitched roof on this, I don't know what a pitched roof is, just by the way, um, but uh, the whole rest of the place has, you know, domed roofs. roofs or something. Um, this says that there are a variety of roof types based upon the style of the building. And so that's your guideline. Yeah. Well, there's a variety of, so is there really any reason why we would say no to this person? It follows all the other it, it, guidelines it, it, yeah. and we have a variety. We probably don't have not just pitched on roofs. new construction? It probably right. not, but Dean has to go through an enormous amount of detailing for the township, right? Right, right. And so if it met his detailing for the township, heights, weights, whatever, it would probably fly through this commission or not. Or he would make him change it before it even came to this commission. I think this helps the commission look around the city and say there's a variety of roofs. So if this person's coming into the district and they want to put this roof here, that's okay because there's a variety. We're not all the same here. Yeah. So it's okay to put a, a, this no, a different sense. roof. Yeah. Okay. And I think it, that's what all of this is. It's just guidelines for them to say, well, that's what we have in the whole city. That's kind of what we have here. So we're okay to do that. Or it's not. Yeah. One or the other. Okay. Uh, so that might be something to come back yeah, to because. Right. All right, so let's go back to page five. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we got anything else on that page. Um, actually, Mark, uh, Mike suggested you eliminate number eight. And I thought that was interesting. He stated that they have never, they have never pursued this. Okay. But. We're Laconia, so we're different. Well, certainly in the in the in the limited district that we're originally proposing, there's not much opportunity to cut or fill because it's pretty right, darn flat. Right, right. Uh, but in the future, we may have different districts or, or well, expanded and then districts. The, the question is, if I change the topography, does it really change the historic significance right. of it? True. And if it's too large of an area, 100,000 square feet, then I need an alteration of terrain permit. Right. So that's a whole different horse. Yeah. So we could uh, I'm, away with I'm, it. I have no issues with removing that completely. I, I think you're right. I don't I know. I thought it was I, interesting yeah. that he had never, ever. Okay. If everybody else is okay with that? Pursue it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so for number six, going back to the signage, yeah. we're leaving that in. Are we going to? Uh, we're going to add a few words there that Tara had, and um, then we'll. Was that a few words to try and to tighten to up on what a temporary sign is? And a couple of other sign types of signs okay. that would, would right. not be under their purview. Okay. So more so that you don't have to, you know, if you've got this, you don't have to come see us. Yeah. Okay. Page six. Page six, number one, okay. up at the top. The way that I read it with putting the interior there with those buildings, yep. something previously designated by the commission as significant for their architectural or artistic value. I think we should get rid of that, the interior of, and move it down in front of architectural because what we actually want to do is say you can't mess with the inside if the inside is the reason that you're important. Hmm. I think the way it's, it's written now with the interior of those buildings previously designated for artistic value, it could be read as the building itself was designated for architectural or, archi or artistic value, and now I can't mess with the interior. 
when maybe the interior wasn't the important part. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, okay. The um, interior should be the value of it. All right, so in this section, these are things that are exempt from review. So in general, work performed on an interior of a building is exempt from review. The exception being the, that if the, it was the intention here was that the commission would have to identify that the interior of the building was part of why it was included right. in this. Right. So um, I haven't been in it, but I have seen some very rudimentary pictures and I've been told by a number of people, but using the, uh, the Opera House in Lakeport, the, the, it's supposedly mm -hmm. gorgeous and very intricate inside. Mm -hmm. The outside is yeah. somewhat <laughs> historic looking, but you know, yeah. But that particular space, the, the actual Opera House is, is stunning, supposedly. Um, so obviously you'd want to preserve that. If so that if, they, the if they that ahead of time said, yeah. we're not so much concerned what you do to the outside of that building maybe, but that part, so portion of the building, be. we want you to keep as close to. It's a good point. Right, as, but as, as, what, what I'm saying is the way that I read this. But right. they would have to do that ahead of time as opposed to when an applicant comes in and says, the intention of this wording, and it may not make make the grade, but the intention of the wording is they would have to make that designation of that building ahead of time, not at the time that an applicant, applicant comes in and says, I want to do something in this building. And they go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We think the inside of that is, is great, and we want to preserve that. But we haven't said word boo about this before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that was the intention of the wording was, if it's significant, it's significant whether someone's proposing to do something or not. Right. And if it's better to, re to declare it significant before somebody wants to do something than at the same time. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right. But the way that I'm reading it is that any building previously deemed yeah. architectural or artistic, before you do anything inside, you have to get approval because the building was deemed not because the interior of the building right. that's why I'm saying what we want to say really is that you only have to check with us if we've said that the interior is of value that's why move the interior down to the end before architectural or artistic okay. value all right okay oh, because otherwise it's a, it reads to me anyway like it's any building yeah. that was deemed, and I mean that would be any building right, that's in right, the right. historic district. Yep. Gotcha. So it would read, except for those buildings within the historic that district have that have been previously designated, designated by, the, by the commission as significant for their, their interior, interior or architectural yeah, like or artistic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Gotcha. Anything else on page six? No. Seven. I'm sorry. Number four, we oh. talk about all this stuff. Um, and we wrote temporary. So we're, um, is there a way to broadly exclude items? Not This comes back to that visible from the right. street thing again. So where are we in exempt? Building on the lot that we no part is visible at any time. Visible from the street is what you're thinking. Well, like broadly exclude items. This was a question that Michael certainly gave, and I started reading it. And there's just so much in here. Yeah. I don't know if there's a way to. Basically, anything invented after 1900. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, subject that, to review. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little more thought on that one, but there is an awful lot there, and that 
I'm, I do wonder if there's a way to just make it pretty broad that it's basically don't throw that stuff out in the front. Yeah. So if I... And if we put these things in there like that, I feel like, you know, you know you've missed something. <laughs> you know that something is not listed here. Um, oh, it's... You know what I it's mean? It's very specific. It and, is, and so... And that is the... Uh, that could that, be that's, a downfall. That's a, that's a lawyer's dream. <laughs> <laughs> both, but both but lawyer because that, this that is under write. exemptions, maybe that's for a purpose, because you don't want to leave it too broad and leave it up to people to say, hey, it's exempt, because if these things are, you know, if you make it too vague, it's left to interpretation. Right. Because this is what's exempt. So if I want to put a pool in, I don't have to do it. Right. Well, if your pool is not visible from the street, you could you could do it. You right. could do it. So if there's a way to that's why it's say exempt that. Right. from here. Right. These are um, exemptions. Right, but if do we just say that at the yeah. top already? Any farms are situated on a building or on a lot that no part of them will be visible from a from public the street. street. Yeah. Is there some reason why we just don't leave it like that? Well. Or. I just feel like there's there's got to be something we're missing, and someone's going to say, "Well, it's not listed." So oh, absolutely. I'm putting that well, in then the front. they have to come to you and ask the commission if it's okay to do it. So it's better to ask for approval than oh, not. I see where you're going. Okay. Because um, these are the allowed exemptions. I think the assumption that most property owners would take is if 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 you're not, not specifically listed. if you if you're if it's not listed then I can do it. That's a loophole. No, you can't do it. These are exemptions. These are the exemptions. You have to get approval so if, if it's if not, it's not on, on this here. list. You have to get approval. These are approved exemptions These that you exemptions. can do without right. approval. So it, 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 it's exempt not from on the side of the street, really. They have to so it's exempt from review if it's not visible from the street and if it's one of these things. Right. Yep. That's I can, what, I can build says. it without approval. Th then I can build it without approval. And, and, that's, and that's why it's a specific list, because somebody sat down and said, hey, if you want to put a barbecue behind your house and I can't see it from the street. No, you're right. You're, no, you're right. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, and that's why we put in temporary placement. So we put that in so for the someone. pumpkin fest. Right, So right. they can put a barbecue thing out in front of right. the train right. station. Right, right, okay. Fest. Right. All right, all right, all right. It's only a temporary cool. thing. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, we got to meet like once a day so we can remember what we said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're good. All right. Anything else on six? Nope. Moving to seven. Um, so when we say all these things about little historical or architectural distinction or significantly contributes, in the end, in the beginning really, there should be from the commission some sort of list, right? That should be like their first job. Because it refers to that so much in here that they're going to need a list of things, places, yeah anywhere in the city really to do it correctly, I guess, um, right? Because if someone comes to them and says, I live here and I wanna paint this house this, you should automatically be able to say, you're good to do that because you are not considered significantly blah, 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 contributing or significantly historical or whatever. Right. I'm just asking because I feel like whoever they are should probably get on that <laughs> at some point. It comes up a lot, as that's what they're going to have to base their thought process on. Um, so your number seven in particular, you're looking at, right? Well, yeah. It just it's we just talked about it right. in another one, significant architectural, and we talked about there's going to have to be a list. So I don't think anything has to change there. I'm just throwing that out. Right. Yep. Okay. 
Number eight, is there a reason why we didn't say all buildings? It says units in a single family residence or accessory apartment. Five holes, mailboxes, window, air conditioning units. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Is there a reason why we page? exempt from review? We're on page, uh, I think we're on page six. Yeah. Um, number eight. I think. I think they're trying. Uh, I'm sure this is a cut and paste from Durham. Yep. Um, I'm I'm sure that they were trying to make the distinction between. more substantial buildings, you know, larger commercial or mill buildings, oh, wait, 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 that wait, wait, kind wait, of thing, eight, 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 and trying to uh, give the single homeowner more, le le more leeway, mm -hmm. more. So like. So y using your situation, if you're at the mill building. And I want to put up very, a flagpole. It's very strict, whereas if it's. If it's uh, welcome, we'll, we'll, right be, we'll be done soon. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you may be delayed a long time. Dean. So just recently, obviously, our flagpole fell off the building, and we are putting it back on, but we went through the process of whether or not we put it in the front of the building, like in the ground. Um, would I not be exempt? I'd have to come ask because I'm not a single family residence right. or an accessory apartment. You, you, you would not be exempt. So, but why? See, I, f I, even if like, so if you guys lost your flagpole or something happened, and you put up a different flagpole or put it someplace else. You you know what I mean? Like yep. the same with the library. So I just feel like I don't know that that's a I, 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 I or think a mailbox. It's, I think it's I think it's strictly a matter of because in Durham the historic district encompasses single family residences, commercial buildings. All connected in together. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it was an effort to give some form of relief to, to the individual single mm -hmm. family home that they're not they're not being restricted as much as say right. a prominent commercial building or something like that, I think. But um, is that is that utility poles a remnant from a deletion or something? I thought the same thing. Nobody's it putting in utility poles it, except and it doesn't the other stuff is listed put. first. You can put one right through the middle of your house and you can't say nothing about that. Because they have the right of way to do whatever but they want. But then it should be with the uti with the flagpoles, mailboxes, and the air, air conditioning unit. Why is utility poles by itself at the end of the sentence? Residents or accessory apartments, utility. Yeah, that does seem a little weird. Utility poles. Oh. Utility poles. Yeah, what? there may have been a cut there. I don't know. I'm not sure that you can say anything. I think, I think, I that, don't if I think that if we I restrict. The utility has the right to do whatever. That might be not be the right piece. place for that or the right wording, but if we restrict utility poles in the historic district or that they need approval in order to put that, that Eversource or it's Comcast or Atlantic Broadband or whoever is, the, the names keep changing, but anyway. Right. Um, they would have to get. Well, these are listed as exempt from review. That's a flagpole, yeah, okay, mailbox, yes. window. Right. So air utility poles are exempt. Utility poles yes. are exempt so, from review. But but shouldn't that be moved towards the the front of the thing, or uh, or put in there before utility poles, or I don't know. It just doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, language-wise, it seems odd. By itself, at the end there, with no conjunction or anything. <laughs> Accessory it's like an afterthought. Or utility junction, poles. Junction, what's yeah. your function? Right, okay. And, and utility poles and or something? And utility poles, yep. and or. Okay, gotcha. And, and like Tara was saying, for somebody that just wants to replace it, should we put something about um, flag poles? 
Never mind. She These can are replace exemptions. it. She, you, you, These you're are talking exemptions. about moving it, right? Right. When yeah. you move it, it's a whole different ball game. Oh, I know. You were saying because you're not in a single family residence and you want to replace the flagpole, that you would have to get approval because it's not single family. But as yeah, long as you're replacing that was odd in kind, yeah. you should be able to do it even if you're not in okay. single family. All right. So with that in mind, if we move the word utility poles to the front of that, so that utility poles, flag poles, and mailboxes are exempt, and window air conditioning units in a single family residence or accessory apartment are also exempt, period. Okay. Yeah. So air conditioning units in a multi-unit building or a commercial building would not be exempt. Just to use it as an example. Yep. Why? We don't have to go into that. <laughs> I have to think about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Page seven. Again. <laughs> Looks good. Eight. There was. Um, are we on site plans, that whole site plans piece? Yeah. Yet? Yeah. So um, he wanted, Michael wanted me to mention, no, we not yet, on, we're not there yet. We are on. Yeah, seven is site plans. Okay. Is the yeah. site plans. Oh, yes, sorry, yes. So Michael just wanted me to mention that um, this particular piece was pulled directly out of Durham's, and the only reason they added it was after a problematic application, one problematic application. Mm -hmm. He had suggested that you could simplify it to say site plans when necessary to depict the proposed changes. I, right. you know, we're that looking would be to, great. Okay. I figured, you know what, yep. we're looking to kind of make okay. things a little easier. Yep. yep. And the fact that he mentioned that, that was nice. Yep. Okay. And C, elevation drawings, same thing. Um, once had a um, problematic application. Suggestion to simplify was elevations, drawings to scale of each affected facade subject to review. Okay. Perfect. And then when we come across the problematic application, we can play with it later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Page eight. F through 2 through B1 and 2. Okay. Oh, um, this came out. Number 2, under review of application, mm -hmm. is that on the page? Yep. My pages are a little skewed. Yep. Um, suggestion was change the language to the following. Submission of materials and time frame. It is the responsibility of the applicant to submit all necessary items. As long as the application form itself is submitted by the deadline, the application will be included on the next agenda. This falls under your knowledge. Yeah. However, the applicant is urged to submit all pertinent materials by the deadline or shortly afterward in order to ensure that HCC members have access to increase the chances that HCC will be able to make take final action. And he gave an RSA uh, okay. I'm assuming. So maybe you can look at that. Yeah. See if that's worth a thought. on that page? Uh, nope. nope. Moving on to page nine. Which is the start of three. Okay. Suggestion to addition change. The commission will seek to work collaboratively with the applicant to extent, to the extent practical to find mutually acceptable solutions to design challenges that conform with the standards and purpose of this chapter. I don't know if that shortens what we have doesn't meeting. seem like it. When there are aspects of <laughs> well, which nice may not conform to this article commission, I don't know. All right. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Well written. Uh, there was, it was 
pretty strong to suggest that I think this is the part that applicants should never pay for anything that they have to bring or something to the I know to the commission something about fees for public hearing no screen print board screen blah This one starred, caught my attention. Not recommend against, I would recommend against including this provision. It's not necessary to make the process more difficult. Good reason that a hearing is required for planning board but not HDC commission applicants. The applicant should not be required to pay any fees. Most projects are minor and don't warrant holding an official public hearing. And he, so this might be something for that's the, more of an RSA and yeah, legal. Yeah. Okay. So something to look at there. So and he doesn't think that an historic district commission is subject to the same rules that say a, pu a planning board or a zoning board Maybe. Yep. is subject to in terms And I don't know okay. that I Anything agree completely with fees? that. We have something that says fees in G, right? And then uh, earlier, I'm looking at G, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure on another page. I know. Earlier, he had mentioned to not emphasize enough not on to the, charge an application fee nor any other fees. Charging fees will only alienate applicants. Purpose of the district is preservation, not revenue enhancement. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Um, do we have? Do we have a fee? There is. I don't no think we had any fees. It says there is no application fee. Oh, that's you found it, right? So okay. right there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I. I have didn't too. see any, but I didn't know if commission waiver discretion waiver waiver requirements for the submission or any of above items, as well as drawings, precise scale. That there is no application fee for application for the historic district commission. That's what we have. Yeah. And I didn't. I figured I'd so say something just if it it's moved in G. along. And oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Top of eight. Top of eight. Yeah, we've got, all right, okay, let's, we'll, okay. Dean, mm -hmm. it's 6.01, do we want to stop for our Conservation Commission? No, we'll delay them. We're almost done. Then they, they okay. come in here. P page nine looks good. That way they can get recorded. <laughs> Why have a ten? <laughs> Why have a ten? It was stuck together. Okay, page eight. Or nine, I guess we were on going. No, eight, right? No, we went back to eight. I yeah. think we were on nine. We and were on nine. nine. We, we went are, back we to eight. nine okay. and moving forward. All right, so action on the application. Commission's decisions. That uh, C3 mm -hmm. question is the, uh, how long is approval um, In effect. good for? You say two year, for two years here? I, I would no. say no longer than two years. I mean, I think you could make it, I think you could make it as little as one, but I don't think that that is Unusable. necessarily fair to most applicants. Well, especially be because there's a the winter season that, that you can't do a lot in, so that would give you like four or six months, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, I think two years is good. Okay. Okay. Number five, oversight of construction. At its discretion on larger and more sensitive projects, the commission may recommend that an architect oversee construction of the elements and details of the building that are part of HDC's approval. Um, suggested that it was heavy-handed 
a little too heavy handed. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Michael did suggest to delete it. As I read through it, I felt that that I could see where people so taking into account the gentleman in Lakeport currently, yep. if that had fallen under HTC, that may have been, and if for some reason the HTC felt that it was, you know, it needed to be oversight of construction, I think that's a little much. I don't know how anyone else feels about that, but I did agree to that. I, I did think that after reading that, it is a little heavy-handed. But it's a little over is the, the HTC going to uh, requ uh, suggest that, request that? I don't think so. We don't have that in any other place in the town, do we? Uh, construction. Yeah, I mean, we 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 will do um, third-party construction. You do for for planning. Yeah. For yeah. different projects. I know you guys have gone out and done yeah. some things, but I didn't know there was third party. I mean, we could just. Modified to suggest that an architecture, like a, a local, somebody specific or whatever, be um, um, consulted. Could you, could you modify it to something, do something like that? Like that yeah. Yeah. Or at least just change oversee to like monitor or something. Over, yeah. Oversee yeah. sounds kind of like. Yeah, doesn't it sound like somebody's they're, on the job? They're on lurking? site. <laughs> yeah, all the jobs I've ever done, the architect oversees completely. If you put monitor, it, it could the just. Payoff, so no one gets paid. Yeah, if you put <laughs> monitor, though, it could just be him riding by and yeah. looking and saying, hey, wait, something. Looks good for my house. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Won't see you from the beach. <laughs> we'll, we'll work that paragraph. Anything else after. I have little it? things, but you can look at them. Yeah. Um, okay. D, E, and then we're down to standards for review on pa uh, bottom of page 10. Yep. That's an excuse. Goes into 11. Last time we met on number six, you said you were going to potentially talk about how we, we the, the, if there's an opportunity for funding. I know in, in this document it says that we have to put a report together for the town. Right. But if the town doesn't have the money and you have deteriorating architectural features, is that life in the big city or what, what do you do about that? Well, it's part of that GoFundMe page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, it, it's an issue and the fact that you have an historic district commission probably doesn't necessarily guarantee the access to grant funds or, or right. but it certainly it enhances, has avenues for it. It enhances your application and puts your application at a higher Right. Level. I agree. So does does the commission I mean this there is a lot of money out there, but it's not necessarily easy to get. And the fact that you're in an historic district commission certainly is going to help your cause. I would agree with that. And so as a team, would the, the commission assist some folks in potentially? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that would be. they absolutely should. If yeah. they, and if they're doing the job right. I think they should, too, then because they they're imposing would the, uh, yeah. the rules. They should help with the funds. Right. <coughs> and, and especially the more experience you get with it. You right. learn different avenues. Right. And if and you're doing the, if you're connecting correctly with the right groups in the state, you'll know what's available and when and how. Right. And, I agree. And, I agree. You know. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on page 11? Nope. Nope. Page 12. Signs. Yes, um, I do think the, the elements of design should probably be at least reviewed right. by people and um, and looked at. And I can send through what Sonia had yeah, created send me that. so that you can see what it, how it would relate to Laconia itself. Yep, okay, will do. Um, Twelve is good. New construction, demolition, other issues, required maintenance and demolition by neglect. Again, you get into that. If someone doesn't have the money to take care of the building, I don't know how they have the money to fix it, but that's. And 
you got my my very early on email about the whole enforcement right. piece. Right. Yeah. Um, in the original one, and it did, Michael asked why it was missing in this one, um, there was a section on applicability to the city of Laconia. Um, and so what it states is, any property owned by the city of Laconia within the HOD shall be subject to the provisions of this article herein provided, however, that following a public hearing, the Laconia City Council may, by a two-thirds vote of the members present, override any vote of the commission pertaining to such property. So holding city property under the same right, guidelines. So city is not exe exempt. And that's it's in my email as well. To you normally today. the city is exempt from its own rules. Well, what you just well, read. Good point. <laughs> what you just read said the city's not exempt, but the they city can, council override can override it. it. Okay. And I think that. I, I'll have to look. I don't. I think it's original. I think that yeah. is actually an original statement okay. from the original. But that makes sense. That may have been something that. <laughs> and then there's an appeal added. process. Yeah. All right. So I worked that up. Uh, Sarah did have a few of the things that I. But, so I'll make note of that and I'll send out a new document. Okay. What shall uh, we do next? Shall we? So I know we're pushing it we off could even do, further at this what point. What we could do is um, we'll update the document. I'll send it out. We could do approval or comments by email if you want. And if it's not too extensive. And I know that's somewhat subjective, but if it's not too extensive, then we could update again and then present to planning board on September 3rd and see what they want to do at that point in time. Mm -hmm. But if, we, if we're if we continuing to get right. this level of, then we, we, we wouldn't be able to do that. All right, just make sure if you have comments on the new document, reply to all. Yeah. So yeah. we're all in, <laughs> yeah. in the discussion. Yeah. All right, okay. so we won't set another another meeting. No. We'll do it by email and expect that we'll be at the planning board meeting with it on September 3rd. Yeah. What's the uh, drop dead date to make September 3rd? Uh, middle of next week. 28th is the last day where the agenda must be, yeah, where yeah, everything has to be done. So that's Monday. So oh, that's, that's Wednesday? So 827 should be the day. Yeah. So yeah. We have Give to us do 24 it by hours. Yeah. By Tuesday. Okay. So I'll try to get the updated doc out tomorrow. That's okay. okay. Friday at the latest. Give it the weekend. <laughs> you guys got nothing to do with going, right, on the no, weekend? I, You're good? Okay. It's I'm all good free. It. All I have Thank to do you is review. You. Thank you. Piece of cake. Sorry, you have to stay for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm leaving too.